Hey there, it's been a while. Uh, between vacation and uh, new projects at work, I really haven't had a lot of time to do anything uh, video related, so I wanted to do a quick video today on um, something that came up at work recently, or at least it's related to something um, we've done recently at work, and that is uh, boundary conditions with ordinary differential equations. So you often get problems in physics and engineering where you have a differential equation that d describe the behavior of some sort of system and rather than being an initial value problem where you know something about the the function value at you know your initial point and its derivative at that point you know something about uh, two different points on that 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 uh, that domain so you might know the first derivative at the, the at your initial point and maybe the function value at the second point so the question becomes how do you solve such a such a problem uh, we've developed algorithms such as the Euler method and Runge Kutta for initial value, but we haven't talked about any, anything about uh, the boundary value problem. So what I want to do today is just give you a quick, uh, quick and easy method to solve these types of problems. So it requires some uh, knowledge of the equation in question. So I think what I'm going to do is solve a very simple problem first, basically a textbook problem out of a differential equations book, and then something I actually did back in the 90s as part of my research which was slightly more involved, but really really not that much. So the technique involved is called the shooting method uh, for reasons which will become obvious uh, when we get into it, and uh, allows us to solve these, these, these types of problems using these canned routines that we already have in SciPy or MATLAB, like um, solve IVP in, in SciPy and uh, ODE 4.5 in, in MATLAB. So um, let's just uh, jump into a notebook and, and get into it. Alrighty, okay, so notebook. Uh, our imports, just um, NumPy as usual, matplotlib, and we're going to use the solve IVP, the solve initial value problem from SciPy. And that uh, is going to implement our Runger Kutta algorithm, which we talked about last time. And the problem we're going to look at is right here. We have a second order differential equation. This is kind of written generically. Um, <clears throat> so dy d squared y dt squared is some function of t, y, and the first derivative of dy dt. And the issue we have, notice that this is a second order differential equation. And to, do, do, to solve an initial value problem, you need to know the function at some point as well as its derivative at that point. I mean, just recall back to your differential equations course for an nth order differential equation, you need n initial conditions. And the problem we have is we don't really have that. We have a couple constraints uh, written like this. So you have alpha 1 times the function evaluated at some point a plus beta 1 uh, times its derivative evaluated at some point uh, at, at, at the same point a is equal to some number. And likewise, at some point b, uh, you have a similar type of condition. Now what we're going to do is, uh, in our two examples, we will either set alpha or beta equal to zero uh, in, in one of these equations. So in the first one, we're going to set uh, both beta, uh, beta 1 and beta 2 equal to zero. And then in the second example, uh, in one case, we're going to have an alpha 1 equal to zero as well as um, uh, beta 2. And I think this will be uh, clearer with a concrete example. So let's do something really simple at first. Okay, so here is the first simple example. Second derivative of y with respect to x plus 3y is equal to 0. And our boundary conditions are the function y evaluated at 0 is equal to 7. And the function uh, evaluated at 2 pi is equal to 0. I got this problem off of a uh, university website in Ordinary Differential Equations, um, course notes or, or something like that. Uh, I chose it just because they have an analytical solution available and I could just copy it because I'm lazy and didn't feel like working it out by hand. But uh, this problem can be done by hand and this is the solution down here. So we can use it to check our, our numerical answer. So let's actually just kind of code in um, this answer so for comparison's sake later. Okay, so um, here's our x data from 0 to 2 pi uh, using the lint space command to generate evenly spaced um, x values and our y solution, which I called uh, y exact. So let's just plot this out quickly. plt dot plot x comma y exact, and we will use a black line. So here we are. Uh, as you can see, um, at x is equal to 0, our function value is 7. Uh, just as advertised uh, up here. 
and likewise add a value of x is equal to 2 pi, our function value is 0. So um, let's just comment that out, uh, but keep it in mind as we build our, build our solution. Okay, so here's the function we're going to need for our initial value solver here. Uh, remember a second order differential equation. Um, our solver can only handle first order, so we transform it into a system of two first order differential equations. And we've talked about this before. I've done videos on um, solve IVP before. Um, I could do so again if, if, if the need arises, but let's just go with it and run that. Let's just run it through a solver, but the issue again we're going to have is we don't have these initial conditions. So we have only one initial condition. We know the function value is zero. We know nothing about its derivative at zero. So let's just run it through the solver anyways. Um, and we'll just pick a, a random value for the first derivative and see what we get. So our x span uh, values uh, that'll be equal to x zero and x, uh, the last point of that vector x from up above here that we defined here, so zero and two pi. And I forgot a bracket. Okay. And we need to put in our initial condition. So y zero, and remember this is a two dimensional vector. Um, the first component of it is our actual function. Um, and the second component is the derivative. So we know what the function is at zero, that is equal to seven, but we have no idea about the first derivative. So let's just pick, uh, I have no, no clue. Let's pick 10, make sure that takes it. And it helps to put in the equal sign, does it not? Okay, so let's just generate our solution. Solution is equal to solve IVP, our function which defines the system which is called the equations our x values our x span vectors so x span our initial condition y is zero and i wanted to evaluate it at all those x points so t eval is equal to x uh, that should do it let's just see if it runs solve IVP. Okay, that looks good. So let's plot out the solution. Now remember, the solution here is an object and that contains um, our time values t and then our function values as a uh, NumPy array. The first row of that array being the ones we're in interested in, our, our y values. So let's come up here. Uh, where's my mouse? plt.plot. Here, let's just pull out those y values. So, so let's call this um, y num for y numeric. And that'll be equal to solution.y, uh, the first row, the zeroth row, and all columns. So plt.plot, uh, x comma y num, and let's make it um, I don't know, let's just make it uh, a blue dotted line. So there is our solution. In fact, to help us out, let us put these uh, boundary conditions in as dots. And I'm going to clean up this plot a little bit, put in uh, excess labels and grids. I'll probably do that off of the recording. Okay, so I put in our boundary conditions as uh, blue dots. So we land on this one here. So. Um, y is equal to 7 at 0, so that is correct. And obviously this one is wrong. Our function value is somewhere down here at minus 5 point something, and we should be up here at 0. So as the name of the algorithm uh, implies, the shooting method, what we're going to do is fiddle with our um, the thing we do not know, which is this value right here, which I've set to 10, the first derivative of the function at our initial point, uh, which happens to be at x is equal to zero. And we will fiddle with that until our function hits our target here at, um, at uh, x is equal to two pi, and we land up at uh, y is equal to zero. So this is also why it's called the shooting method. Like if you were firing uh, artillery or mortar or something, you might uh, fire a couple of test shots. One, say shot one happens to uh, land to um, in front of the target, shot two lands behind the target. Well, what you might want to do is split the difference and set your set your angle of attack 
um, you know, to be maybe the midpoint um, so that you're not just kind of shooting randomly and hoping to hit something. So in that way you can kind of walk your shell onto your target and that's what we're going to do uh, with our function here. And that is also why I said you need to have some sort of domain knowledge, some, some knowledge about this function, this differential equation, uh, to figure out what happens when you start changing uh, this derivative here. And that's easy to figure out in this case. We could just kind of tweak it a couple times by hand before writing some, um, some sort of like bisection code and just see what happens. So we are too low here. So maybe we need to um, raise it up. So let's raise it up to 20. Hmm, that seems to make things worse. So we're probably going in the wrong direction. Let's cut it down to five maybe. So five is kind of closing in on the right direction. What about, um, what about zero? So zero is getting close. How about minus, I don't know, let's just go minus 10. Okay, in this case we overshoot. So you see what's happening is we lower that, um, we lower this derivative uh, initial condition. Our endpoint keeps getting higher and higher and higher. And as we raise that condition, we will, uh, this function gets lower, lower, and lower. And, <coughs> excuse me. And we'll find out that the more advanced problem is exactly the opposite. Uh, which is why you need to kind of poke around a little bit beforehand before setting this up. So let's see if we can do, come up with some sort of systematic uh, way to solve this. So the way I think I'm going to do this is just wrap this all into a while loop and just have it run for a set number of iterations. And then, uh, then if some sort of tolerance is released, because we're never going to hit it perfect. So if we get to a 10 to the minus 4 with it, you know, plus or minus 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 6, uh, we'll, we'll break out of the loop. So let's just set our tolerance first. Let's go tile is equal to, I don't know, let's set it to 1, minus, one, is, one times 10 to the minus 6. Um, let's just set our max number of iterations uh, to 100 so our loop doesn't run away. And um, <clears throat> just poking around, we saw that our value is, our real value is between 10 and minus 10. So let's put a low bound on this equal to minus 10, a high bound on this equal to plus 10. Um, and what we will do down here is set this equal to some value y prime zero, which is some, you know, some midpoint, midpoint between the two. So let's actually define that before I forget y prime zero is equal to, let's just use the mean function. So mp dot mean, um, low high looks good okay so let's build our while loop and um let's keep track of the no number of iterations so count is equal to zero so while count is less than or equal to max iter <clears throat> uh, we're going to in increment our count so count is equal to count plus one we're going to need to indent all of this. Uh, we'll do the plotting outside of the loop. So, okay. So if our last point in this vector, uh, y underscore numeric. So if, uh, let's take the absolute value, np dot abs, the last um, element of that array, y underscore num, last value is within our tolerance. So if this is less than or equal to tau, we just break out of the loop. Okay, now we need to adjust our, um, our, our bounds so, so that we kind of tighten the, the constraints on the problem. So we know that if y underscore numeric last element is less than zero, we need to reset our high value. Uh, what did I do here? Zero. High is equal to y prime zero. Otherwise, low is equal to y prime zero. And let's just print out our count. And what 
what else might we want to print out here, just for diagnostic sake. Uh, let's also print out the last uh, value at our boundary there, the right-hand boundary. So y num, y underscore num, last element. Um, let's just run it and see what happens. Uh, typo in the tolerance part. Uh, there. Um, oh, I forgot my equal sign again. Why the hell have I been doing that in these videos? I don't really do that otherwise. Underscore. So it looks like we're running away here. So something is wrong. <clears throat> so we'll, that's kind of why I do these printouts here. So we see it's not really changing the function value. So I assume it's not changing the... Um, initial guess of the derivative. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. Uh, there's a minus sign here that shouldn't be there. <clears throat> now we're running away to the other side. Okay, so I think I found it. I think I had had the high set to the same value as low initially. I want plus 10 and minus 10. 21 iterations, and do we hit our target? Yes, we do. So let us, uh, where did I do that original plot? Let's plot our exact solution over on top of it. So copy that, come down here. We will paste it in. Um, let's make this a, yeah, let's keep it, uh, let's make it blue dots, just to, so it's a little easier to see, a little bit bigger. And let's put a legend in here. So I labeled this as uh, exact, this um, dotted curve as numeric, and I turned on the legend, so let's run it. We match basically perfectly. Cool. Okay, so in the interest of time, I think what I'm going to do is split this video into two parts. We'll make this one the general background kind of proof of concept with the toy model thing. And in the next uh, video, I will do the more complicated, it's based on a real world, real world problem, as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, but it's more involved, but I don't want this video to go on forever, so in the interest of time, we'll just, I'll just split it in half and upload, um, you know, maybe a day or two apart, and just do that, so, um, yeah, until part two, I will uh, see you.